Hi guys and welcome to a new section uh, where we are going to have some fun with data management with Python and uh, this is where you are going to learn like the base of uh, applications and all applications have to deal with data so let's get into it so uh, in many scenarios, uh, you need to store data between executions of uh, your program. Uh, the data you want to store uh, could be local status information, such as the current location in an ebook reader, or the current working file name. Or it could be administrative data, such as usernames and, pa and passwords or server addresses. Often it will be large volumes of business oriented data such as uh, customer orders inventory or address information and many business applications consists of little more than a mechanism to create view and edit stored data this capability to store data in such a way that it is available for use on subsequent invocations of your program is known as data persistence because the data persists beyond the lifetime of the process that created it. To implement data persistence, you need to store the data somewhere, either in a file or in a database. So this lesson is a bit like a history of computing storage technologies, because that's because the need to store data has grown and continues to grow ever more complex with the passage of time. You now have a broad range of technologies uh, available covering every storage need. From a few simple configuration settings to sophisticated distributed data sources representing thousands of logical entities. So in this lesson, we learn about the different options available for storing data and the advantages and disadvantages of each. And along the way, we, uh, you will see how Python modules assist in this fundamental, fundamental programming task. So let's uh, talk a little about storing data using Python. The simplest storage is a plain text file. You have already seen it in, in section two how to use a text file to store data in various formats, such as CSV and XML, as well as how to store unformatted text. These formats are fine if you need to store the data only when the program closes and read it back when the program is started again. This situation makes, uh, makes these formats very suitable for configuration data or application status information. And these flat file formats are less useful when you need to handle large, uh, handle large volumes of data non-sequentially or search for specific records or fields. For that, you need a database. A database is just a data storage system that enables you to create, read, update, and delete individual records. This set of four fundamental data man management functions is often referred to as a CRUD interface. Database records consists of one or more key fields that uniquely identify the records, plus any other fields needed to represent the attributes of the entity that the record represents. A Python dictionary can be used as a type of non-persistent database in that you can use the dictionary key to create, read, update, or delete a value associated with a given dictionary key. That could be a tuple of fields or a record. All that's missing is the ability to, to store the data between sessions. The concept of a dictionary as a database has been exploited over the years and various forms of persistent dictionaries exist. The oldest are the database management or DBM family of files. So we're also going to look at the DBM as a persistent dictionary. <coughs> Excuse 
excuse me. <clears throat> DBM files originated in Unix, but have been developed over the years for other platforms as well. Python supports several variations. These variations are hidden by the DBM module that automatically determines the best solution based on which libraries are supported by the OS installation at hand. If no native DBM library can be found, a basic pure Python version is used. The DBM system is a simplified version of a dictionary in that both the keys and values must be strings, which means that some data conversions and string formatting is uh, necessary if you are using non-string data. The advantages of a DBM are that it is simple to use, fast and fairly compact. You can see how DBM works by revisiting the tool hire example from uh, section 2. When you last looked at it, you were working from a spreadsheet at the master data source. Suppose you decided to migrate the solution to a pure Python application. You would need to store need a storage mechanism for the various data elements and if you recall the spreadsheet had two sheets one representing the tools for hire and the other actual loans by the members the record formats are show, shown in the first uh, table here this table here on the left <clears throat> that design is fine for a human working with a spreadsheet but if uh, we you want to convert it to a full-blown data application we need to convert we need to overcome a number of issues with it first there is a lot of duplication between the two entities the name description and owner fields are all duplicated and therefore need to be changed in two places whenever they are edited both entities use the item id as a key which suggests the item id represent both a tool and a loan, which is confusing. Several fields store names of subscribers to the service, but it would be better to have a separate entity to describe those members and references. That member entity from the other entities. Finally, although this started out as a tool hire application, there is no reason to limit to tools. The members could just as well borrow books or dvds or anything else so rather than restrict it to tools we can rename the tool entity as item and keeping and in keeping with that we can rename the application to reflect its more generic approach let's call it lendy db for example one note is that the changes to the tool hire data involving removal of duplication and splitting of data into single entities are typical of those performed during a data design process known as normalization. This is a highly formalized discipline and whole books have been written on the subject. And this course only touches on the principles, but it is an important component of good database design. If we need to design a high performance, high volume database, you should research normalization to become familiar with the technique. And with very little effort, we can rearrange things to overcome the issue with the spreadsheet. And the table on the right shows the resulting database design. If you redesign from this first uh, table to, to the, the, the one on, on the right, you now have three entities, so you need to store the data in three data field files. You can store them. At, you can use the DBM format for this, for this because each entity now has a unique identify field, which uh, in string format, in string format works well as a DBM key. You need to populate these files with data. And that means reformatting the data from the spreadsheet. We could write our Python program to do that because the sample data set is small. It's easier to just cut and paste the data into a new format. So 
let's try it out with the with the, an example where we will translate the data from the tool hider spreadsheet into <coughs> uh, a database called Lendy DB data format and save it as uh, three sets of DBM files. <coughs> yeah, you then pr uh, prove that it work by reading the files and printing their contents. So I will create uh, the code to do that and I will pause uh, the the video as I'm I am uh, punching it in the, in the ID to save some time so I'll, I'll explain the code because it's very time consuming to to uh, type the, uh, the code so I'll just pause the video and I'll get back to you <coughs> 